on World News Tonight. Healthcare crisis. As India faces a rising population, demands grow for medical attention as the country faces the shortage of doctors. Revolution looms. Fears of riots and revolutions grow as Imran Khan supporters show their distaste for the arrest of their leader. Contracting economy. China, the world's second largest economy, is failing imports, sap global growth goals. The sky awakens. Fireworks light up Moscow at Victory Day celebration. This is Ada Derana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and welcome to World News, where we bring you news from across the planet. Pakistan remains on edge following the former Prime Minister Imran Khan's hearing on corruption charges a day after his dramatic arrest. The Pakistan Army has been called in to maintain law and order in the eastern province of Punjab and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa amid widespread protests in the country following former Prime Minister Imran Khan's arrest on Tuesday. Following the military deployment in Punjab, the government of northwestern province of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa has also called for troops to quell protests. In notification, the government said that in view of prevailing law and order circumstances, the provincial government was calling on the armed forces in aid of civil power as per the country's constitution. The Pakistani rupee fell 1.3% to a record low of 288.5 against the US dollar a day after Khan's arrest. Pakistan's international bonds nudged lower with the 2024 issue down 0.4 cents on the dollar according to trade web data. Bonds traded at deeply distressed levels from 49 cents on the dollar for shorter dated maturities to about 33 cents on the dollar for longer dated ones. Imran Khan has been indicted by court for unlawfully selling state gifts during his premiership between 2018 and 2020. The case was filed in August by a member of the Pakistan Muslim League, Nawaz, contending Khan had bought gifts given by foreign dignitaries from the state gift depository but did not disclose the assets in declaration submitted to the commission. The Pakistan's election commission in October found the opposition leader guilty of corrupt practices and disqualified him from being a member of parliament. Khan has rejected the allegations and has called the case politically motivated. Over to neighbouring India, as the nation faces a struggle in coping up with a rising population, the demand for medical care is on the rise as well. India is facing this amidst a shortage of healthcare workers. Hundreds of ailing patients from far-flung areas of India spent the night sleeping on the footpath outside a prestigious hospital in the nation's capital with the hope of getting treatment. Under Prime Minister Narendra Modi, more than a dozen AIIMS facilities were built over the last decade to improve the quality of healthcare around the country and reduce the burden on older hospitals like the AIIMS in New Delhi which was established in 1956. But government data shows that there are significant shortages of doctors at these new AIIMS hospitals as well as other public hospitals around the country, something which the government is aware of and is working to address. A technical advisor at India's Public Health Resource Network, Dr. Vandana Prasad, said that there has been an active effort to increase the number of doctors in the public health system around the country, but induction as well as retention remains poor, despite offering higher salaries. According to Dr. Prasad, the lack of upward mobility as well as poor conditions and infrastructure in rural areas are amongst the multitude of reasons why few doctors are willing to be included into public health care systems outside rural Rich urban centers. Dr. Arun Gupta, the president of the Delhi Medical Council, reiterated that it is not the only lack of doctors that is the issue, but also the condition of the health infrastructure in the poorer states that is causing a lack of available treatment. Data shared by the World Bank, which is providing a $1 billion loan to India for health infrastructure improvement shows that the states like Kerala in the south and the Delhi region have a surplus of doctors as compared to poorer states like Jharkhand and Bihar in the east, which are facing severe shortages. According to the data from the WHO and the Indian Medical Council, the doctor-to-patient ratio in India has dropped over the last few decades, falling from a ratio of 1.2 doctors per 1,000 patients in 1991 to 0.7 as of June 2022. The ratio recommended by the WHO is one medical doctor per thousand patients. 
China's imports contracted sharply in April while exports rose at a slower pace, reinforcing signs of feeble domestic demand despite the lifting of COVID curbs and heaping pressure on an economy already struggling in the face of cooling global growth. China's latest trade numbers are casting a shadow over growth hopes at home and abroad. Imports unexpectedly fell almost 8% in April. That was far worse than economists expected and extended a fall seen the month before. Exports grew 8.5%, or little more than half the surge recorded in March. The weak numbers come despite the lifting of health crisis restrictions. And they will raise concern worldwide, as the import numbers mean the global economy may not be able to rely on China to drive demand. That's already showing up in other numbers, such as a drop of more than a quarter in South Korea's shipments to the country. The cooling export numbers also suggest tepid demand for Chinese products overseas. Beijing officials have repeatedly warned of a severe and complicated external environment amid recession risks for many key trading partners. Analysts say rising rates and the recent banking turmoil are among factors limiting demand in Western markets. Now China watchers wonder whether Beijing will step in with new stimulus measures. One told that extra support for the manufacturing sector looked likely. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen held talks in Kyiv to discuss Ukraine's integration into Europe and new Russian sanctions. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said as Moscow marked the Soviet victory in World War II. European Union states hold a first discussion on proposed new sanctions over Russia's war in Ukraine that would target Chinese and Iranian firms and allow export curbs on third countries for busting existing trade restrictions. The EU's chief executive unveiled a plan on a symbolic trip to Kyiv, a counterbalance to annual celebrations in Moscow of the World War II victory over Nazi Germany that President Vladimir Putin likens to his invasion of Ukraine. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said that the new sanctions would focus on cracking down on circumvention of Russia trade curbs already in place and were designed in very close coordination with the group of seven nations. Diplomatic sources familiar to the proposal drafted by von der Leyen's commission said that it also includes blacklisting tens of new companies, including from China, Iran, Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. The new sanctions would highlight that oil tankers are not allowed to offload in high seas or arrive in ports with their GPS trackers off, an attempt to push back against flouting G7 restrictions on trading Russian oil. Seoul's top office has once again stressed the importance of the close investigation of Fukushima wastewater by Korean experts. The comment was followed by a statement from Japan that Korean experts will not be addressing the contaminated water. South Korea and Japan have conflicting interpretations of the upcoming inspection of Fukushima wastewater. Seoul's presidential office on Tuesday highlighted the necessity of a practical inspection of the wastewater by experts after the two countries agreed on the dispatch of a Korean delegation to the wastewater site. Citing an anonymous South Korean top official, Yonam News Agency reported that Korean experts need to investigate the safety of the water purification facility and Japan's ability for its operation separately from the IAEA's wastewater verification process. Earlier the same day, Seoul's foreign ministry also mentioned in its National Assembly report that South Korea has secured the opportunity to, quote, inspect and assess the safety of Fukushima wastewater. It said the Korean delegation will be able to collect information that could be used for scientific analysis. However, Japan's industry minister Yasutoshi Nishimura sees the purpose of the inspection differently. According to the Japanese news agency Kyoto News, Nishimura said in a press conference that Seoul's inspection team won't be assessing the wastewater. He said the team will be given a briefing on the storage of the wastewater and construction of the water release facility in order for the team to understand the Japanese government's claim that the discharged water would contain radiation levels below the standard limits. The minister also says he hoped that Korea would better understand the situation with the wastewater, pledging that a transparent and scientific explanation will be given. He denied the Korean experts would be able to directly check water samples. South Korean presidential office meanwhile said that any issue was a case of different phrasing and terminology rather than opposing perspectives. 
The top official also said the inspection team will check the overall operation of the purification facility, adding that it should be different from the IAEA's process as Korean experts are already taking part in that. A bilateral ministerial meeting will be held later this week to discuss more details on the inspection of Fukushima wastewater, which could take place as soon as later this month. We'll be back with more world news after this short commercial break. Welcome back. Hundreds of migrants were stranded between two U.S. border walls near San Diego, California, as officials appear to struggle to process them. Thousands of migrants have amazed along the U.S.-Mexico border with COVID-era restrictions set to end tomorrow. Volunteers passed oranges and other items through the bar of a U.S. border fence to migrants near San Diego. Hundreds of people here have managed to cross one barrier at the U.S.-Mexico border, only to wait at a second one in a sort of no man's land, as U.S. Customs and Border Protection appeared to struggle to process them. Adriana Hasso is one of the volunteers and a migrants' rights activist. There is a high level of uncertainty um, and some anxiety from the migrants waiting. We have met people who have been waiting here for four nights. Uh, at night it gets very cold, uh, in the morning it gets very cold. We have situations of moms with babies from eight months uh, to seven months. Uh, we have uh, uh, young boys who are 10 years old, 8 years old. Border agents are bracing for a surge in migrants as a pandemic-era policy that allowed for the rapid deportation of asylum seekers is about to end. Migrants have been expelled more than 2.7 million times under the rule known as Title 42, a total that includes many repeat border crossers. And migrants continue to amass at several points along the border despite repeated calls from President Joe Biden's administration that the end of the policy will not result in an open border. Volunteers say conditions at the crossings continue to worsen. We probably, um, end of last week, uh, we had a number of about 120 to 125 people and what we see now is um, it could be close to the 400 500 number white house press secretary Karine jean pierre thursday Everybody. said biden spoke with the mexican president about the situation and the administration remains focused on dealing with it in a humane way what you can expect from us is that we're going to do everything that we can and use every available tool to us as we have been to deal with this issue in a humane in a humane way, uh, manage it humanely. And that's what we've been very clear about. Uh, our focus uh, when it re as it relates to managing the border is we're gonna do this through enforcement, deterrence, and diplomacy. And that's what you have seen. And uh, we've been working with our regional partners and we have just few tools that are available to the president. You know, And that's because Congress has failed to act. The Republican-controlled House of Representatives does plan to pass a package on border security measures that would put tougher constraints on immigrant asylum seekers, resume construction of a wall along the southwest border with Mexico, and expand federal law enforcement. President Joe Biden and top lawmakers met face-to-face -face as a deadlock over raising the $31.4 trillion U.S. debt limit threatened to push the country into an unprecedented default in as soon as three weeks if Congress does not act. U.S. President Joe Biden said his meeting with top congressional leaders on Tuesday about the debt ceiling was productive despite failing to break the deadlock over raising it. We need to take the threat of default off the table. We agree to continue our discussions. But he vowed to meet again with the group in the coming days, just three weeks before the country may be forced into an unprecedented default. I didn't see any new movement. After about an hour of talks, Republican House Speaker Kevin McCarthy reiterated that his chamber would not approve a deal that didn't include deep spending cuts, but confirmed he would meet with Biden again on Friday. I would hope that he'd be willing to negotiate for the next two weeks so we could actually solve this problem and not take America on the brink. Republican Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said ending the standoff was ultimately up to just two people. The sooner the president and the speaker can reach an agreement, the sooner we can solve the problem. Democratic Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said the two sides remain far apart, 
with his party calling the Republican bill to raise the debt ceiling, which includes sweeping spending cuts, dead on arrival. The disagreements are wide, and anyone who says my way or no way and we're going to default is not serving the country well, and I'm afraid that's what Speaker McCarthy is saying. Representative Hakeem Jeffries appeared more hopeful, saying the promise of another meeting between the top lawmakers and the president was a good sign. President Biden urged us to get together, either later on today or tomorrow, our respective teams, to have a discussion about a path forward around the budget and the appropriations process, and everyone agreed. That's progress. Economists warned that a default could send the American economy into a deep recession with soaring unemployment while destabilizing a global financial system built on U.S. bonds. I'm not ruling anything. I said I'd come back and talk. I just really, there's one thing I'm ruling out is default. Biden said he would take a hard look at clawing back unspent COVID relief funds as part of any budget deal with Republicans. He also said he was considering invoking the 14th Amendment to end the standoff. I have been considering the 14th Amendment. White House officials have discussed whether Biden has the authority to lift the debt limit on his own by invoking the 14th Amendment, but Biden said it could trigger a major legal challenge. Kenyan investigators exhumed 21 more bodies as they resumed a search for followers of a doomsday cult who the interior minister described as victims of a highly organized crime. Dozens of bodies were exhumed in Kenya on Tuesday as investigators resumed their search for followers of a doomsday cult. Highly organized crime. At a press conference, the country's interior minister described them as victims of a highly organized crime. The government of Kenya will do whatever, whatever it takes to unravel this organized criminal activity that has costed us all these people and counting. Leader of the Good News International Church, Paul McKenzie, remains in custody. He's accused of ordering followers to starve their children and themselves so they could go to heaven before the end of the world, which he said would come on April 15. He has not yet been required to enter a plea, and his lawyer said he was cooperating with police. Officials say 25 people have been arrested in the course of the investigation. Bad weather has stalled the search operation in the Shakahola Forest in southeastern Kenya. Kenyan President William Ruto has ordered an inquiry into the mass deaths, while a court is keeping Mackenzie in detention, pending further investigations. Over to some sports news, Lionel Messi was suspended earlier this week by PSG for going on a personal promotional trip to Saudi Arabia without permission. The seven-time Ballon d'Or winner's two-year deal with PSG ends this summer and he is now set to leave the league one side on a free transfer. Lionel Messi, the man many consider to be the greatest footballer of all time, will be plying his trade in Saudi Arabia next season, according to some sources with a bumper contract all but signed. It will bring down the curtain on two seasons in Paris, which barring disaster, will see Messi add two league titles to his extensive medal collection. But club football's biggest prize, the Champions League, has eluded PSG and Messi during his time in the French capital. For some, that makes his spell at Paris Saint-Germain a failure. While others are sad to see him go, most agree that the time is right for club and player to part ways. Just six months ago, Messi was lifting football's biggest prize, but last week was suspended by his club after taking an unauthorized trip to Saudi Arabia. It's an acrimonious end to Lionel Messi's time as a PSG player. Welcome back. For more news, let's take you on the world in a minute. A man gained access to an orphanage in Poland, killing a teenage girl and injuring nine other people in a knife attack. Police received information that a 19-year-old man had entered the orphanage in the village of Tomislavich near Lodz and attacked residents with a sharp object. Thousands of people in Gaza, including members of militant groups and civilians, attended the funeral for victims in a surprise pre-dawn airstrike by Israel that killed 15 Palestinians including four children and five women and wounded 22 others. 
Among the dead were three senior members of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad movement's armed wing. Formerly a Thai Petrogan supporter, broadcaster Mehmet Daljik switched allegiance to his rival after the ruling AK party failed to offer sympathy for the destruction of his TV station in Turkey's mainly Kurdish southeast in February's earthquake. Chinese State Councillor and Foreign Minister Chingang called on China and Germany to stick to the right path, jointly opposed the new Cold War and decoupling economies or severing supply chains, and inject confidence and impetus into to world peace and economic recovery. Chin made the remarks during a meeting with German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock in Berlin. China's Tiangsu 6 cargo spacecraft is going to carry more than 700 kilograms of materials for scientific experiment to the Tiangong Space Station. The 714 kilogram cargo includes 98 experiment units and samples for 29 scientific experiments and application tests in the four areas of space, life, science and biotechnology, microgravity fluid physics and combustion science, space material science and space application new technology tests. That is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you miss any of the stories tonight, you can watch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And finally, we visit Russia, where fireworks lit up the sky over Moscow, marking the end of Russia's annual Victory Day celebrations. Good night.